Selma Blair is in remission but with significant multiple sclerosis symptoms including chronic pain. Now I'm going to read you an article updating her condition. Even if you don't care about celebrities, I think this article is very instructive and teaches us something about MS. For people who don't know, Selma Blair is an American actor. She's quite well known. She was in Legally Blonde and the Hellboy series and several other movies. And she likely retrospectively had MS her entire life, but the symptoms were more mild. But then she developed severe relapsing MS and was diagnosed at age 46 and had significant gait difficulty and imbalance. She was actually treated with hematopoietic stem cell transplant by Dr. Richard Burt, who I've interviewed on this channel. This is a treatment that is not a stem cell treatment, but it is an aggressive chemotherapy regimen that wipes out the immune system and can be very effective in relapsing MS, though it does come with significant side effects. She did improve with this treatment, but still has some residual symptoms symptoms, which we'll talk about. This article is by Brendan Morrow of USA Today. Selma Blair is feeling lucky as her multiple sclerosis remains in remission, though the actress says she continues to experience constant pain and stiffness. Now, this gets to the idea of invisible symptoms. When we think about MS, we think about vision loss or weakness of the limbs, walking difficulty, things that we can see. But there's a lot of invisible disability in MS. So stiffness, what is the cause of this? Well, in multiple sclerosis, there can be be damaged to the descending fibers that innervate the motor neurons within the spinal cord, and this disrupts their control of muscle tone. So people can have increased muscle stiffness and spasms, and this can cause pain and imbalance. That's a muscle type of pain. There's also a nerve type of pain, neuropathic pain, often described as burning, sharpness, hypersensitive, sometimes with unusual symptoms like an electric or water sensation. What's happening is, let's say you have a normal leg, it's sending sensory information through an abnormal spinal cord, and that information gets mixed up, and by the time it gets to the brain, it's interpreted as pain. Now, there are treatments for this type of pain, for instance, muscle relaxants or even medical marijuana for muscle spasms and for nerve pain. There are alternative treatments like alpha lipoic acid, acupuncture, and of course, medications such as gabapentin and Cymbalta. The Cruel Intention star gave fans and followers a health update in a new Instagram video posted this week, telling fans she is doing well as she addressed the camera from bed while undergoing intravenous immunoglobin therapy, or IVIG. Now, IVIG is a therapy where artificial or recombinant immunoglobins are given, and it's used in a lot of different autoimmune diseases, including conditions of the nervous system, such as Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease of the peripheral nervous system. Now, historically in MS, there were some small pilot trials suggesting it is effective, but there was actually a larger, really well done randomized trial showing it actually had no benefit whatsoever, either in clinical outcomes or in MRI findings and is generally regarded to be ineffective. And that would be my personal opinion. I don't think it's an effective treatment of multiple sclerosis, and I personally wouldn't give it for this reason, although some doctors disagree. Now, I don't know her specific situation. IVIG is used for other things. For instance, people who have low immunoglobin or antibody levels as a side effect of medication could be given this medication, but it's not to treat the MS. It's really to help their immune system. Now, she received hematopoietic stem cell transplant, I believe, in 2021. Now it's 2024. It's unlikely she would be significantly immunosuppressed if she didn't have other treatments, which supposedly she hasn't had, but I'm just speculating here. By the way, I am a neurologist and multiple sclerosis specialist. My name is Brandon Bieber. I am in Los Angeles where she apparently lives, but I don't know her. I've never seen her. None of this is personal information. It's all public information. 
According to the National Institute of Health, IVIG is a pooled antibody and a biological agent used to manage various immunodeficiency states and a plethora of other conditions, including autoimmune infectious and inflammatory states. The ultimate goal of this therapy is to normalize a compromised immune system. Blair was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2018, and in 2021, she revealed that her MS was in remission. Now, remission is a little bit of a misleading term. In people who have relapsing remitting MS, remission essentially means you're not having an attack. It doesn't necessarily mean you have no symptoms. You could have residual symptoms from prior attacks and certain symptoms such as pain and fatigue, they're not necessarily associated with a specific attack, even though they're well-known symptoms of MS. They may simply be ongoing. But people can be in remission but not feeling well and have significant symptoms. In her recent update video, the actress shared that she remains in remission, although she continues to suffer from dystonia, a condition that causes involuntary muscle movement. So dystonia is kind of like a cramp, but more of a sustained muscle contraction. It's not a very common symptom of multiple sclerosis, but it can definitely occur, and it can be very painful and disabling. She has noticed that she moves and walks better when she is by herself, versus when she is in public, she explained. When I go out, it's still very pronounced. When I go into different rooms, hallways, or meeting new people, or even focusing on talking about it, Blair said. This is something I've heard before. I think it's when you're in your own home or your own environment, you're not worried about people looking at you, bumping into you. You just feel more comfortable and confident. I kind of don't mind talking about how strange that is because I know it can look weird. And when I I didn't talk to anyone else that I had MS or other things that might be like this, some neurological or other chronic things. I didn't know it could come and go like that, she added. Now, this is definitely part of MS. The symptoms can fluctuate quite significantly. People can look pretty good, but sometimes a stress on the body, increasing temperature of the environment, exercise can bring out the symptoms, and people can just have a lot of day-to-day -day fluctuation. Blair also noted that her body still gets really, really stiff, again, the spasticity, due to Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So she has this other disease, apparently Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, I'll continue reading, which according to the Mayo Clinic is a group of disorders affecting connective tissues in the body, primarily the skin, joints, and blood vessel walls. I'll pull my muscles too easily, and then they're like slack and sit there, she said. So I get some injuries. So this is actually a genetic disease. There are a lot of different variants of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, some very mild, some more severe. People can have hyperflexibility Flexibility. They can be double jointed, bend their joints backwards, have super stretchy skin. And sometimes it can actually lead to joint problems and can be associated with things such as heart valve problems and even arterial injury or dissection or a tear in the wall of artery. So it can be a serious condition. And people may be prone to injury with it just because the hyperflexibility makes the joints less stable. This has nothing to do with multiple sclerosis. It's just a separate condition. But but Blair said that while she still experiences fatigue and is stiff all the time, she seems to be doing fine and she is due for another MRI and more blood work. Blair, who also starred in Hellboy and Legally Blonde, first revealed her multiple sclerosis diagnosis in 2018, writing on Instagram at the time, I have MS, but I am okay. But if you see me dropping crap all over the street, feel free to help me pick it up. She documented her battle with MS in the documentary Introducing Selma Blair. I did a review of the documentary on my channel if you want to search it and check it out. In 2021, the actress announced that her MS was in remission after she underwent hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Some people wake up two years later and they're like, I'm healed, colors are brighter, as she told Self in 2023. But I never had that moment. I just stopped having regression. And so she improved, she got a good result, but of course not a perfect result. 
My experiences with patients who have undergone this treatment are highly variable, and I've had some patients do it with Dr. Burt. I've had some patients go to Mexico, Clinica Ruiz, or other providers. Some people are very stable, doing well with minimal problems. Others have a moderate amount of disability but are stable, not progressing. And I do have a few patients who develop progressive multiple sclerosis after undergoing the treatment. So certainly, success is not 100%, but for a younger person, person with relapsing MS, often the results are good, though the risk can be significant depending on the conditioning regimen. There are different conditioning regimens. Some are stronger, some are weaker. Unfortunately, the stronger, more toxic agents seem to be more likely to deliver a higher probability of long-term remission. While Blair said she is not complaining because she is doing really well, she reflected that she isn't sure that she will ever have the coordination or balance or stamina that she wants to. And of course, it's very frustrating, even if you're doing okay, when you used to be very high performing and athletic. Still lucky, she said, still grateful, still okay, but still a bummer. In October, Blair appeared with President Biden at the White House event to celebrate the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Rehabilitation Act, where she shared, Although I'd had symptoms since the age of seven, it took a lifetime of self-advocacy to finally lead me to a diagnosis at age 46 after living most of my life in pain and self-doubt. And it's quite common for people with MS to retrospectively have symptoms for many years. Quite recently, I saw a patient who very clearly had multiple sclerosis for at least 10 years, but her symptoms were always attributed to low back problems. And just coincidentally, he doesn't have, have very severe lumbar arthritis and abnormalities on an MRI of the lumbar spine. So it just fooled everyone, both him and various doctors, into sort of misdiagnosing his multiple sclerosis. Now, it's fairly rare to have an onset of MS prior to puberty, so age seven is quite young, but it's actually fairly common for young people, maybe after age 12 or 13, to have multiple sclerosis, and I see teenagers with MS all the time. So I, I'm, it's unfortunate that Selma Blair isn't doing better than she is. Uh, sometimes with multiple sclerosis, the disease modifying therapy to get the disease under control and stop further relapses and progression is just half the battle. And now maybe her battle is trying to control her symptoms. And so she's dealing with pain, spasticity, and fatigue. But there are treatment options. I don't know what she's tried. There are certainly a lot of options. Sometimes it requires a little bit of experimentation just very recently, I had a patient who had a completely different neurological disease. She has something called Dejerine Lucy syndrome, which is neuropathic pain due to injury of the thalamus. And she had seen different doctors and tried different neuropathic pain medications, and none of them worked for her. And she was very frustrated and essentially giving up on medicine. And I told her, look, you know, we can experiment. We could try something else. And we just tried a different medication and we got lucky. It actually worked for her and she had a significant reduction in pain. It's not because I knew the medication would work. It's not because I had some kind of superior judgment than the other doctors. I just got lucky. But sometimes if you experiment a little bit, try some different things, you may find something that works for you. And hopefully Selma Blair will find something that works for her. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Do you people with MS have experiences similar to Selma Blair? Had you been misdiagnosed for many years? Have you undergone hematopoietic stem cell transplant? Would you consider it? Had you experienced symptoms such as pain, fatigue, and spasticity? What worked for you and what didn't work for you? And let me know if you have ideas for other videos.